Now that I'm back in Georgia, by necessity, I've been interacting with a lot more Christians. They are fucking everywhere in this town. And, you know, I, I'm no longer shying away from the atheist label, so I get into way more religious discussions with idiots than anyone should ever have to. Now, I'd love to say that I take on their theology and make the case for atheism in these conversations, but I rarely do if it's somebody I'm in danger of interacting with again. You know, I try to keep it as pleasant as possible. And what I've learned along the way is that I really don't even have to take down their theology. They'll do it themselves. Just asking them to explain their religion usually provides them with all the rope they'll need. Right, so here's my opening gambit. Usually this starts when I say the A word and then somebody asks for clarification, right? Like, what does it mean to say you're an atheist? What claims about the universe are you making? Is that a devil thing or a commie thing? So I'll usually summarize my beliefs as follows. I'll just tell them, like, I don't believe in God or miracles or an afterlife. And, th and then I'm basically done, right? They, they have a bunch of stupid questions, but I've already given the full and total definition of atheism as it pertains to them in that moment anyway. And as discussed on the show at length, I hate these stupid fucking questions because it's always the same three damn questions. But luckily, I found a pretty good method for avoiding them. Basically, I preempt all their questions with one of my own. Uh, that You know, if I don't want to do the whole Pascal's wager thing again, I'll, I'll just follow up my definition of atheism with, so as a Christian, what would you say you believe that I don't? Now, so far, I've tried this something like a dozen times. I've gotten three types of responses. The first is the fumbling, rambling explanation that starts with what they don't think God is. Right? Like, well, I don't think God's a man on a throne in the clouds. I also don't think he's a, a curling iron or a, a ham and cheese sandwich. Now, the second type are those people who skip right over all the theology shit and get straight to how much Jesus agrees with their political opinions. Well, I believe Jesus is going to set all them abortion doctors straight as soon as he gets his mouth sword on them. And the third, of course, is the wishy-washy hippie Jesus that just wants him to love everyone, right? Jesus speaks to me through my heart and tells me where to park. Now, I'm still waiting for theoretical type four, a person whose explanation would match up even vaguely with what a person would garner from reading the Bible, every major work on theology in the past 1800 years, and all those definitions and all those dictionaries. I'm still waiting for that. I haven't found anybody who can just tell me what the fuck their religion is. Now, to be fair, I'm asking the fine people of Waycross, Georgia, so I'm not exactly dealing with the cream of the intellectual crop, but... If you look at where the Christians are in this country, both geographically and in terms of education, I feel like I got a pretty representative sample down here. And, and, and not a damn one of them can explain their religion in a way that betrays even the slightest knowledge of what differentiates it from other religions beyond the word Jesus. I mean, you know, like we talk all the time about these surveys that show atheists know more about religion than religious people. And, and even when they do know about it, they largely reject it. Right. Most of the Christians don't believe the devil's a literal guy. A lot of surveys show that the majority don't believe in the Holy Ghost. And regardless of which survey you use, it's a huge fucking percentage. Some of them, most of them don't believe the Bible is literally true. Most of them don't even bother to lie to the phone surveyor dude and say they go to church on a weekly basis or even a monthly basis. And when you take all that away, what the fuck does that really leave them? Right? They believe God loves them, they get to go to heaven, and Jesus agrees with their Facebook memes. And look, atheists often point to this trend as though it's a positive, and I guess in a lot of ways it is, right? In some ways it indicates that people are spending less time thinking about this bullshit. It's less important in their lives. Less church attendance means less religious influence, less money in the collection plate, fewer voters informing their decision by listening to a man who believes in fairies for a living. But there's also a dark side to all of this that might outweigh the good. See, Christians are increasingly unmoored from any theological underpinnings whatsoever, and that means they can justify any fucking thing they want with it. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. It's not like they've had a hell of a lot of trouble justifying whatever the hell they wanted to with their Bible in the past, but at least they were kind of predictable then. I mean, when religious people take their books super seriously, we can at least predict what they're going to do. It might be terrifying. Odds are it's going to be terrifying, but at least it's the kind of terrifying you can plan around. But when you take away all the structure, we're left with the devil we don't know. 
I mean, you know, the Bible doesn't come out against abortion. You know, in fact, you can make a damn good argument that it shoots down the whole life begins at conception argument when it prescribes different punishments for causing a miscarriage than it does for killing a person. Or when it specifically states that the soul enters the body upon its first breath in multiple locations. The best the anti-abortion side can pull out of the Bible is God telling Jeremiah he knew him before he fashioned him in the womb and a, a weird penchant for using all the cum. But that doesn't matter because they've already taken away all the theological underpinnings. They don't know what's in the fucking Bible. Look, the Bible isn't clear on a whole lot of shit. But one thing that's unmistakable to anyone who reads the damn thing is that you're not supposed to mistreat immigrants and refugees in your land. Right. That's the third leading message of the Bible after God will kill you for not believing in him and God will kill you for not loving him. And yet these Habula rasa Christians have no issue whatsoever justifying their xenophobia through Jesus. Hell, the Prince of Peace seems to be good with their AK. Look, look the, the, the book is plenty horrifying by itself, but there's been this multi-century effort to soften its edges and, and you know, at least produce something that's not going to sound horrifying to these indigenous people you're now trying to sell it to. I'm not longing for Christians to stick to their books or the teachings of their Messiah, but it's no better when you throw away everything except the creator of the universe has directly condoned my actions. And if Christians have proven anything over their long history, it's that they can be way scarier than their book.